In a heated confrontation, John Stewart publicly accuses Donald Trump of inflating property values, shedding light on the adverse impact on the adverse impact on the financial well-belling of New York City. Stewart vehemently denounces this practice as a deceptive maneuver, one that detrimentally affects the local community. He posits that such manipulative conduct erodes faith in the financial framework and establishes a hazardous precedent for unethical behavior. By unveiling the broader ramifications of Trump's actions, Stewart endeavors to hold him answerable for what he perceives as wrongdoing. Don't miss, what are the consequences of overvaluing properties, according to John Stewart? How does Stewart connect Kevin O'Leary's comments to broader issues like corruption and tax evasion? What is Stewart's stance on prosecuting individuals involved in fraudulent activities in the real estate sector? Surprised to hear this from Kevin O'Leary, the guy who's such an asshole. <laughs> Wait, <laughs> that even the other people on Shark Tank thinks he's an asshole. <laughs> now, he's very chill. I'm surprised to hear that he's so chill about overvaluing something that he thinks is victimless. I'm surprised to hear that he's so chill about overvaluing something that he thinks is victimless. Consider this notion. The overestimation of an asset carries tangible ramifications despite its portrayal as a victimless action. Embedded within are subtle apprehensions regarding the sincerity and uprightness in financial dealings. Because when someone tries to do that to him... Which one of you do I absolutely tear to pieces now on a $28 million valuation? You think this is worth $10 million? Absolutely. Okay, now I'm going to rip your pieces. Are you out of your mind? Your valuation's insane. Your valuation's crazy. Your valuation is insane. Your valuation is crazy. Navigating the realm of overvalued assets can be a journey fraught with frustration, leading to potential ramifications on financial decisions. Implicit within this terrain are concerns that hover over accuracy and rationality in the valuation of investments. I think that's a crazy valuation. I think your valuation is stinky poo-poo. <laughs> oh, no, you didn't. Canadians are so vulgar. <laughs> How is he not this mad about overvaluations in the real world? Because they are not victimless crimes. Because they are not victimless crimes. In acknowledging the detrimental aftermath of fraud, one cannot overlook the genuine sufferers of deceitful actions. Such recognition raises pertinent questions regarding equity and impartiality in addressing instances of financial malfeasance. First, the banks got paid back at lower interest rates. Although, to be honest, who gives a shit? But second, <laughs> money isn't infinite. A loan that goes to the liar doesn't go to someone who's giving a more honest evaluation. So the system becomes incentivized for corruption. And this is part of a different Trump fraud case, but avoiding taxes hurts all of us. Avoiding taxes hurts all of us. In acknowledging the profound impact of tax evasion on diverse communities, we share the weight of revenue depletion. It underscores the necessity for each individual to contribute equitably, bolstering public services and infrastructure. Donald Trump shenanigans cost the city of New York. And to be honest, and let's be frank here, that is money that the city of New York could have used to build more Walgreens. Now, some blocks only have two of them. Leave it to Kevin O'Leary to be unaware enough to say the quiet part out loud. I hear about the, the so-called victimless crimes, but the laws on the books, falsification of business records in second degree, issuing false financial statements, insurance fraud, conspiracy, and all these different aspects of it, those are actual crimes. I take it your point is that these should not have been prosecuted? Everything you just listed off is done by every real estate developer everywhere on earth in every city. This has never, ever been prosecuted. There is a theory in law that if enough people commit a crime, it automatically becomes legal. There is a theory in law that if enough people commit a crime, it automatically becomes legal. Highlighting the significance of accountability and adherence to legal principles, we cannot condone or overlook rampant criminal behavior. It entails understanding the core value that every person, irrespective of their standing or sway, must face consequences for their deed. You're familiar with the purge, are you not? <laughs> the entitled arrogance 
I don't know if you know this, but most people just can't commit fraud and expect to face no repercussions, even if everyone's doing it. Try getting a car loan by saying you have 10 times as much money as you really do, or claim 20 dependents when you have no children, or say you make slightly less money to qualify for food assistance. I will guarantee you there are not just financial consequences for those lies, but criminal ones. I will guarantee you there are not just financial consequences for those lies, but criminal ones. The ramifications of Trump's decisions ripple through New York City, leaving a trail of financial turmoil in their wake. My heart goes out to the residents of the city who find themselves bearing the brunt of these economic hardships. But don't tell that to the investment community, because in their minds, in pursuit of profit, there is no rule that cannot be bent. There is no principle that cannot be undercut as long as you and your friends are making money. In a blistering analysis, John Stewart delves into the murky waters of Donald Trump's dealings in real estate, raising red flags about ethical standards and financial transparency. Stewart contends that Trump's purported strategies of inflating property values not only inflict financial damage on New York City, but also corrode public faith in the integrity of the real estate sector. Through his meticulous examination of Trump's conduct, Stewart aims to ignite broader conversations about the importance of accountability and the perilous repercussions of unbridled authority in both business and politics. John Stewart's critique delves into the pervasive nature of overestimation within financial circles, shedding light on its potentially dire repercussions. It underscores the ethical quandary ingrained in financial dealings, stressing the significance of personal integrity and accountability in economic exchanges, along with the societal fallout of unethical conduct. The ongoing debate surrounding whether overestimation constitutes a victimless transgression reflects differing perspectives on moral obligation and societal consequences. That there exists a nexus between individual conduct and societal welfare as we delve into the ethical ramifications of actions that may not directly harm individuals but can foster systemic corruption or inequity. Kevin O'Leary's contention regarding prevalent practices in the real estate sector raises pertinent inquiries about the nexus between adherence to legal statutes and moral duty. Through an examination of the tension between conformity to legal norms and adherence to ethical precepts, we underscore the significance of individual conscience and moral agency in decision-making processes. Joan Stewart's censure of the investment community's tolerance for fraudulent activities encapsulates a broader societal disposition towards profit maximization and ethical compromise. It underscores the challenge of striking a balance between economic imperatives and ethical considerations while emphasizing the imperative of upholding moral principles even amid the pursuit of financial gains. Deliberation on the repercussions of engaging in fraudulent acts underscores the importance of accountability and justice in preserving social cohesion. Individual accountability lies at the heart of fostering a culture characterized by honesty and mutual trust, wherein individuals assume ownership of their actions and confront the consequences of unethical conduct. What do you think?